Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're having some fun in the play queue with Mono Blue Devotion, which has quite a few payoffs for increasing its devotion to blue. Of course, the recent addition Nykthos built into the mana base can be an awesome way to generate extra mana. We also have Nyx Lotus, a 4 mana legendary artifact, enter stabbed, and then can tap adding an amount of blue mana equal to our devotion to blue in this case. And then there's Thassa's Oracle, which is the eventual win condition of our deck. If our devotion is high enough and the number of cards left in our deck is low enough, it can just win us the game on the spot, but we can also play it early to give us a bit of card selection. And then we're also playing with four copies of Leyline of Anticipation, which is an awesome way to increase our devotion at the start of the game. We can just put it in play if it starts in our opening hand. And then we can also play all our spells at instant speed for the rest of the game, which has a ton of neat synergies in this deck, mainly with the Academy a lore master, a 2 mana 2-3, two, so it adds 2 devotion which is great, says at the beginning of each player's draw step that player may draw an additional card, but if they do, spells they cast that turn will cost 2 more mana to cast. So most decks won't be able to draw extra cards of lore masters since they don't operate at instant speed, but our deck has a few instants we can play alongside it, that way we can still draw the extra cards and still play cards during the opponent's turn, like maybe an omen of the sea which we can flash into scry to and then draw a card, also increasing our devotion by one. There's the Petty Theft Adventure on Brazen Borward to bounce an opposing permanent, and then we can still play a 3-1 Flyer afterwards, also increasing our devotion by two. And of course, if we start a game with a Leyline of Anticipation, we can now play everything at instant speed, including the Lore Master and our other creatures, to maybe set up an ambush. And then by playing the Lore Master end of turn, as well as our other spells, we don't give the opponent a chance to take them out at sorcery speed at least, so it makes it much harder for them to interact and predict what's going to happen next. And then starting the game with a Leyline, is one way we can potentially have those very explosive starts, allowing us to maybe turn 3, already have 4 Devotion, activate Nykthos, and play a turn 3 Nyx Lotus, which can then set up the win on the following turn, although those starts are pretty rare. And then we can generate even more mana in this deck by untapping Nyx Lotus or Nykthos. We've got Corridor Monitor, a 1-4 artifact creature. When it enters the battlefield, can untap target artifact or creature we control. So while it doesn't untap Nykthos, it can untap a Nyx Lotus. And a neat trick to keep in mind is sometimes to go in full control cast your corridor monitor targeting Nyx Lotus and then only tap the Nyx Lotus once monitor is in play to increase our devotion by one and then we'll still untap Nyx Lotus and have access to a little bit more mana afterwards. Then we also have the full set of Vizier of Tumbling Sands, a 1-3 creature that can tap to untap another target permanent. So this can untap both Nyx Lotus as well as Nykthos itself and we can also cycle it for one and a blue in which case we can still untap target permanent and draw a card in the process so that way we don't expose it to opposing removal spells and we can also make use of it right away after maybe drawing a ton of cards of a large Gadwick, which is another great source of devotion adding triple blue devotion it's a 3-3 that we can sink additional mana into and then lets us draw x cards and whenever we cast a blue spell we can tap target a non-land permanent an opponent controls so that's another awesome synergy with a leyline of anticipation if we cast spells during the opponent's turn we can maybe tap some creatures down so they won't be able to attack us and that will buy us more time to set up poor combo and the combo is to eventually cast a finale of revelation for at least x equals 10 in which case we get to draw 10 or more cards after having shuffled our graveyard back into our library and then we can also untap up to five lands so we can untap a nykthos if we have it in play alongside some other lands and that will give us even more mana after just having drawn a ton of cards of finale and then if we find more viziers to cycle or corridor monitors to cast if we have a nyx lotus in play or maybe we have a vizier of tumbling sands in play that we can untap with corridor monitor and then the vizier can untap nykthos to keep going so those are all ways to generate more and more mana we can keep building up our devotion and then eventually we can maybe cast a large enough gadwick to then set up the win with a thassa's oracle or we can cast a seagate restoration a seven mana sorcery drawing cards equal to the number of cards in our hand plus one and also says we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game so that's another 
easy way to draw enough cards to set up the win with Thassa's Oracle, but also has the flexibility of being played as a land, untapped at the cost of 3 life, although can usually find a spot to play it tapped. Also have two copies of Glasspool Mimic built into our mana base, another tap land, but can also be played as a copy of a creature we control. So we can maybe copy a card or monitor to untap uh, Nyx Lotus and keep going, or we can maybe copy Thassa's Oracle if we somehow ended up casting all the other copies already, can still give us an extra win condition. And then the interaction comes in the form of four copies of Witness Protection as an enchantment aura, turning an opposing creature into a legitimate business person, and it also loses all its abilities after shrinking into a 1 1, and it still adds one extra blue devotion, which is quite helpful in building up our devotion count. So we typically don't want to kill the legitimate business person since it's on our side. And then we also have our Penny Theft, of course, to bounce opposing permanent. So we're not interacting a whole lot with the opponent, just hoping to get there in time with Nykthos and Nyx Lotus making enough mana and then we've got a soaring city as an extra interactive channel land alongside 11 basic islands so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and what do we think of this hand no exciting cards outside of nyx lotus which is pretty slow here to get going although we can play turn to lore master and then bounce with brazen borrower maybe that's still worth a try but really hoping for nykthos to uh, speed things up. Opponent a red green with a generous visitor, so red green auras. Don't think they'll be drawing here with a uh, lore master's ability, since enchantments are typically played at sorcery speed. Then next turn we get to draw while still casting borrower in the opponent's turn to bounce. So. All things considered, not a bad start. Champion of the Flame means they're going to go all in on one creature, which is just what we want. And there's Nykthos, so we can run that out, pass it back. This hand would have been perfect if we started with a Leyline of Anticipation, but we'll see if we can still get there without it. Six cents resolves. See if they play another aura on it. Also possible they have a protection spell in hand, which can uh, save the champion from being bounced. Ooh, perfect. Opponent tries to fight here, but uh, not only do we save the lore master, but we send the champion packing. But that was a huge setback for them. Take three. Now what's our move? Nykthos not quite generating a ton of extra mana, but I could play Nyx Lotus. Alternatively, we can draw an extra card and an end of turn Brazen Borrower, and then Nykthos actually generates more mana. Kind of like that idea. And then could also play a tapped Mimic instead. Keep the Soaring City to maybe interact, and might as well attack for two now. So we're getting some nice value for Lordmaster at least. Second visitor. Opponent's got two unknown cards in hand, so Satessan Training's a good one. Triggers double visitor and draws. And take four. Untap, find a Vizier, that's nice. So now I think we have to decline. Gonna just play Soaring City. So just playing Nyx Lotus might be the way to go. And then we'll attack with Brazen Borrower. Could use Vizier to untap Nyx Lotus, play a Leyline. Yeah, maybe that's actually fine here, since I have both Lotus and Nykthos to make more mana, so we should be able to make enough mana for a finale to combo off next turn. Okay, so yeah, if I survive this turn and keep my Devotion, I should be ready to go off. A Light Pause makes sense. 
So that can grab all sorts of auras. And a rune of might for trample. So yeah, should be able to take a hit here. And then next turn, probably start with a Ley Line using my non-Nykthos lanes. This will tap for 8, then activate Nykthos, then untap with Vizier, cast a big finale, and take it from there. So our opponent's hitting us for 9 here. Even if they have a pump spell, I should still be okay. Untap, and we're definitely gonna decline now. Okay, so... Play a Ley Line to improve our Devotion. Tap Lotus. Activate Nykthos. Untap a Lotus with Vizier. And then I could finally for 10 here, since we have a couple of them. Untap Nykthos and a couple lanes. Okay, so let's keep going. Haven't played land yet, and I want to keep that until we find another Nykthos. So let's say we witness protection to improve our devotion slightly. Can put it on light pause. Then we can play one Thassa's Oracle already. And doesn't matter too much, I guess uh, Gadwick can stay on top. Tap Lotus. We could cast a Seagate Restoration here. While we have a ton of cards in hand. So 25 cards remaining. There's a backup Nykthos. So let's say we activate Nykthos again. At this point we don't need to play optimally to still win. Monitor. Can untap Lotus, make more mana. We have 25 cards remaining. So Vizier can untap Lotus again. Play a backup Nykthos. Make a bunch more mana. And can cast a Gadwick for, let's say, X equals 20. And then a Thassa's Oracle should do it. Okay, sweet. That does it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and it's not perfect since we're missing Nykthos and an early Ley Line, but at least we've got two mana, we can play Omen play Oracle, and set up our Nyx Lotus, hopefully. Opponent on a mill deck. Okay, if we cast a Finale for 10 or more, we shuffle our graveyard back. So that's our plan here. And then they may actually help us to set up a lethal Thassa's Oracle. So maybe I don't play it on turn 2. Cacophony mill for 8. Yeah, let's hang on to this uh, Thassa's Oracle for now. Can afford to take three of Restoration, but might as well wait. And uh, can cast an Omen. Don't hate the idea of letting the opponent mill me. Demolition Field could blow up Nykthos. And a Teferi's Tutelage, okay. So for now, play Omen. And do I want Ley Line? Not really. Restoration is an extra land, which I guess is helpful. And then I can just cast a Vizier. And there's Nykthos, which we will keep in hand until we can actually make use of it. So 33 cards remaining. Nykthos Milds. Fable Passage is Mill 6. Not sure if our opponent has seen the Thassa's Oracle yet. 
They may also have some counter spells to stop it from winning the game. Into the story to draw. Pretty good with the fairy's tutelage. So now they get to mill for eight. Okay, witness protection can shut down the ruin crab. So let's say we play this untapped, play a lotus, untap it with vizier, and then could play corridor monitor, untap lotus again. Now our devotion is a little bit higher, and then. I could witness protection a ruined crab and still potentially bounce the fairy's tutelage. Slow the opponent down. And then we'll see if we can set up a lethal oracle soon. Got 16 cards left, so yeah, we were getting pretty low, and if our opponent mills us out and our library is empty before we untap, then that's no use for us. So mill for two. And a secret keeper down to ten. Play it. So we've got nine cards left. Pretty sure we can win here. Let's see, we play Omen. Nykthos can be activated. Another Nykthos isn't necessary. Gadwick could be helpful, I suppose. So let's say we activate Lotus. Play Brazen Borrower. And then play and activate Nykthos. We can play Gadwick, play Oracle, and that should be game. Although, I guess we can play Gadwick first for X equals 2. And then Nykthos, activate Borrower, plus Oracle should do it. And now we can even untap our Nyx Lotus once again, using Corridor Monitor. Not that we need it. So that was pretty convenient against the mill deck. Asa's Oracle wins the game. And we still had a Vizier to untap as well. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and can I turn down double Leyline? No. Still need a Nykthos to really make this worthwhile. But I believe. And then we can play one Restoration Tap for sure. Turn one Herald, so... Opponent may be hitting us with some Auras soon. Could play a Gadwick next turn, just for X equals zero, but it's not going to be able to block Herald. Alright, looks like Merfolk instead. Hexcatcher can be annoying since we're planning to cast some non-creature spells. So we can flash in Gadwick if Hexcatcher attacks, if not I'll maybe wait to draw some cards with it. Metallic Mimic names Merfolk. And our opponent's going to keep their lord back, so I'll hang on to Gadwick for the time being. Nykthos is nice. Okay, so maybe regretting not playing Gadwick end of turn now. But Nykthos could uh, lead to some fun turns here coming up. So make four mana, five, so we can draw two cards with Gadwick as it sits. Could trade for Metallic Mimic. I think Gadwick having three Devotion is still more valuable. Silvergill can draw. So we're under quite a bit of pressure. X equals two. And now if we can cast blue spells in the opponent's turn, we can tap the opponent's creatures down with Gadwick as well. 
double Oracle. That's quite something. So if I play Oracle, Devotion equals 9. So Nykthos makes 9 mana. It's not quite enough for Finale to untap Nykthos, but next turn I should be able to. And then now Witness Protection can also shut down the Hexcatcher. So let's do that in the opponent's turn to tap their creatures down. Another Silver Gill that works. And a Kumena Speaker. Okay, so before they get a chance to attack, shut down Hexcatcher so we don't need to worry about the taxation effect. Tap Miscloaked Herald. And that makes a mana, cast Oracle, and tap down Silvergill. And what do we want to keep? How about another Finale? And then, uh, sure, we can play an Oracle. Okay, still keep Finale on top. Untap, take our turn. And we can freely combo off now. So finally for 10. Could even do this all during the opponent's turn if I really wanted to. But don't want to run into any unforeseen counter spells. Should have floated some extra mana here. That's okay. I have an embarrassment of riches. So let us tap Nick those again. Can play a Lotus. And then a neat trick with Corridor Monitor is to play it in full control, target Nyx Lotus, and then only tap Nyx Lotus once the Corridor Monitor is in play. So that way you have one more Devotion. But you have to make sure to be in full control, otherwise you're not going to get a chance to tap the Lotus in response. Okay, so again, tap that again. Play another Nykthos if we'd like. And then, how much mana do we have here? 32, 36 cards remaining. So it can finally for 30, I guess. And then... Should be able to win with Thassa's Oracle in hand. Again, could have tapped Nykthos to make more mana and then untap it with Finale. But this is going to be good enough. And then Glasspool Mimic can copy Oracle as well. In case we didn't have another one. Awesome, so beat Blue-Green Merfolk on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Yeah, it's missing a Leyline or Nykthos, and I guess uh, Lotus would be nice eventually, but at least we can cast some early spells. We've got the monitor to go with Nyx Lotus if we find it at some point. And a bit of interaction with the Brazen Borrower. Opponent on the red deck. Probably wait on Oracle until we have a bit more devotion and go for Omen first. Aha, uh -huh, opponent on a Sliver's deck. Okay. We'll play Omen. And do I keep another Omen? Don't mind the extra land. So I could keep both on top and then have the flexibility of a Brazen Borrower to bounce or another Omen. Sure. I'm probably going to hold the Petty Theft to bounce a more expensive Sliver, which I imagine our opponent is still playing here. Opponent moves to combat, hits us for two. And the Belligerent Sliver for Menace. Okay, play another Omen. And an X Lotus seems worth keeping. 
bottom of the land, I think, unless we want the extra mana on turn 5. I'll be able to play Thassa's Oracle, monitor to untap, yeah, maybe the extra land is still enough to cast a big finale. So shields are down this turn. Opponent could pump their slivers by 2 power, but then next turn we should have a pretty sweet turn lined up. Bone Scythe for Double Strike instead, okay. So taking quite the hit. Down to 8. So, step 1, play Thassa's Oracle. Finding Nykthos, which I'm now regretting playing my land already. That was definitely a mistake. But, uh, yeah, I can keep it for next turn, which I think we'll still get a next turn. And then if I go full control, can play Corridor Monitor, target Nyx Lotus, and then tap it for mana. And then I guess I'm one mana short of casting Finale for 10. So instead we'll Omen draw Nykthos. And then we can keep Lotus untapped for the opponent's turn. And then definitely be able to finally untapping Nykthos next turn to combo off. Okay, pass it back. So if I didn't play the island beforehand, then playing Nykthos probably gets us there. Now we get to sweat for an extra turn. Hive Lords for Indestructible, that's fine. So we'll just bounce Bone Scythe. And then we can still play Brazen Borrower, increase our devotion some more, and we can block Predatory Sliver without losing anything. Fall to 5, and Gadwick's a great find as well. So now we have Nykthos. So let's say we play a Gadwick for x equals 2 here. And then tap Nyx Lotus, activate Nykthos, and then we can finale for, let's say, 15. Untap our Nykthos and a couple more lanes. And then we should be able to keep comboing. Monitor untaps Nyx Lotus. And then we've got a Vizier to untap it. We have 27 cards left, 16 in hand, so how about we cast a Seagate Restoration and then we should get there and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jigaltha as companion. What do we make of this hand? We've got Nykthos, bit of early interaction, Omen to draw. Yeah, I'll try it. Opponents with a Steenkin, so potentially a Elementals combo deck. For now we can still play Omen and then maybe Protection next turn. And then we'll still be able to play a 2-drop alongside it. Risen Reef makes sense. And that may be what I target with uh, Witness Protection instead. Opponent does not attack. And a Ley Line we don't need. Mimic is also not great here. Let's bottom it. And then a Restoration. So I can Witness Protection. And probably okay to play a corridor monitor just as an extra blocker. Next turn I have the option of casting a ley line to increase my devotion some more as our opponent plays Burgi. So if they have a grinning Ignus they could combo us soon. 
So this turn, Ley Line adds two Devotion. And then it's going to be easier to deploy our two drops once we can generate a bit more mana. Alright, double Steamkin. And a third Steamkin. So, opponent makes a three mana, collected company. If they find Grinning Ignis, they can make all the mana in the world, and they found it. Now Innkeeper can gain infinite life, although infinite life is not enough to beat us. Luckily we shut down the legitimate business person that is Risen Reef. So your opponent can make all the mana they want, but if their last cards don't have another win condition, it doesn't matter, since we don't need to deal damage to win the game. So they can gain all the life they want. Right, opponent has another company, so that may find another win condition. And there's a Risen Reef, so now they can actually draw all the cards they want. I imagine they have something like a Devilish Valley, which will actually win them the game. But I guess we'll wait and see if they actually have it. So yeah, they needed some double company here to find the combo. Otherwise... We may still have been able to survive and assemble enough devotion to win. So grinning Ignis, make more mana. So yeah, next turn we had five devotion. Untap with Vizier. Untap Nykthos. So not quite enough for a finale for ten, so we would have had to draw another Vizier to make that work. There's a Roast Master, so now they have infinite damage, and we'll scoop it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, I don't think I can turn this down. Leyline and Nykthos in our opening hand. We'll need to hit a couple land drops. And then we still need a card draw effect to completely take over, facing turn 1 Elves. Yeah, probably shut it down with Witness Protection. Might have been worth it to just cycle a Vizier and then still play Witness Protection, just to dig a card deeper into my deck. Sentinel, Serpent is Elf Tribal. And another Mystic. Okay, that's a land. So I can play that. Untapped and then just cast a Vizier at instant speed, no less, to maybe ambush an elf. Visionary to pump the team, okay. So it wouldn't be ambushing anyone. And it wins elite, so we can still maybe soak up a bit of damage. Don't want to kill the legitimate business person since that provides one devotion. So we'll just take it. And then cast Vizier. So now Nykthos does generate more mana. And we can play Lotus, untap it. Witness protection, the Leaf Crown Visionary, perhaps. So we can do all of this at instant speed. Although we probably want to make sure to shut down the Visionary before they draw off of it. So I think we have to do it now. So activate Nykthos. Play a Lotus. Untap Lotus with Vizier. And then I can uh, cycle Vizier maybe after putting the Visionary under our enchantments. Alright, was hoping to find some nice Curve Topper here. Just have to pass it back. Lotus is legendary, so can't have two in play at the same time. So yeah, if we can find a finale, we're in business. Otherwise, the elves are going to overwhelm us. Finale, Gadwick would also be great to Shaman of the Pack. That drains me for a ton here, down to nine. And take the hit. 
All right, one turn to top deck. What's it gonna be? Finally, there we go. So that may just do it here. So can tap Lotus, untap Lotus. Finally for 14. Get to untap Nykthos here to make some more mana. And then we haven't played land for the turn, so I can play another Nykthos soon. So step one, build up our devotion. And we can do so with Gadwick. Uh, so let's say we tap this. That's five. Can play Corridor Monitor after maybe playing a Gadwick for zero. Could do this all in the opponent's turn too, but I think we'll be okay to just win right now. So play Monitor. Untap Lotus. Now makes nine mana. And then we can cycle another Vizier. Untapping Lotus. Find a Brazen Borrower. Can play Brazen Borrower just to increase her devotion. Now tap Nyx Lotus. Float some more mana. Cast finally for, let's say, 10. Untap my lands. And we've got 25 cards remaining. Thassa's Oracle for 11. So just need to draw a couple more cards. Play Nykthos. So Gadwick for 15 should be enough. And then now Oracle to win the game. Well, that was a lucky top deck, to say the least. Awesome, so beat Black Green Elves, and yeah, it's not like our opponent had a bad start either. So showing the power of an early Leyline of Anticipation, building up our Devotion, and eventually Finale plus Nykthos to carry it home. So yeah, overall this Mono Blue Devotion deck, not a competitive deck by any means. It's pretty inconsistent at having those nice opening hands with the right pieces. And for the most part it feels a turn too slow against most of the meta decks in the Explorer Best of One metagame at least. Since you're often going to be dead around turn 4 and the deck usually pops off around turn 5 at the earliest. Unless you've got that dream start of maybe Leyline plus an early Thassa's Oracle or Loremaster. And then turn 3 you could already cast a Nyx Lotus thanks to a Nykthos and then you can combo turn sooner. But those starts are pretty rare so I would reserve this deck to the play queue as opposed to taking it to the ranked ladder. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.